Hi, and welcome to the Imaginal Podcast. This is a place that protects and explores what we need to actualize our uniqueness. And like the caterpillar, who carries its butterfly blueprint in its imaginal cells all the way to the chrysalis and then melts into liquid before it transforms. We too have an inner knowing that can tell us how to make our wings. And here's your host, life coach and consultant, Lori Sauce, who goes most commonly by her nickname, Sauce. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. It's Sauce. I'm so glad to be with you and I hope you're having a beautiful week so far. If you're just joining us for the first time, these episodes look slightly different because I have been relocating from the West Coast in the United States to the East Coast, and I've been recording along the way. And this is one of those episodes. I wanted to do a quick intro to it just to give you a structure within which you can listen to it. And in this particular reflection, I'm coming to you from Denver, Colorado. And what I wanted to talk about is the idea that Oftentimes, things can feel scarier than they really are. And I think that a lot of times that idea or that experience could prevent you or me (laughs) from doing the things in life that we really care about or even engaging more fully in relationships. It can keep us from a lot of things. And fear, especially an exaggerated fear, which I also want to say, by the way, is so normal and so human. And we should probably approach with a lot of gentleness and compassion and remember that fear is just part of the human condition. And and noting that, we can work with it so that you are not disempowered just because fear comes through sometimes. I think, too, that sometimes fear can amplify when we're in new territory or when we're experiencing something different or when we maybe start to pursue a dream. We get partway into it. We hit a roadblock and we're like, oh, my gosh, maybe I can't do this. So that's what I wanted to talk about today, because I'm literally pursuing one of my dreams going across the country in my Honda Civic and relocating to the East Coast where I've wanted to live, I've dreamt of living my whole life, and I hit a roadblock and I had amplified fear. And when that happens, you can get into the place where you're like, oh no, I don't know if I can do this. Or what have I gotten myself into? Or possibly you just might quit. And so that's the place, that's the threshold that I want to talk about today. Because it's in that space, if you can just keep going and trust that it very often isn't as big as it seems, we can then bring that fear down, normalize it, realize it's so human, and then move through it. And I really think that all too often, an exaggerated fear will keep us from the things that we care the most about. And that's not happening on my watch. No. So I wanted to share this with you just so that you can see that if you look at it from the outside, you're going to note that it probably doesn't seem too fear inducing. But because I was in unfamiliar territory, because I was alone, because I was partway into pursuing a dream, I felt like, like there was a lot at stake. And I. I got scared. So with that structure, I invite you to think about what are the things that matter to you, but maybe fear or even the fear of having fear (laughs) might be preventing you from starting that thing or continuing down that path. And I deeply want you to be who you want to be in this world and to experience what you want to and to contribute what's on your heart and to engage in life in the ways that you want to and to rest when you need to. Like whatever it is that fear is interrupting, that's what I want to to move through together today. So I share this story in all of my humanness just to link arms with you and say, you know, 
maybe it's not that scary. And like I said, you're going to see that mine really wasn't that scary. But for me, all of a sudden, I was like, oh my gosh, can I do this thing? And I really started to feel a bit panicky and out of proportion to what it really was. But when it's you, it can feel more daunting. So compassion for yourself when you're feeling that. But also, let's take a breath and realize that there's probably a way through that might not be, or probably isn't as big as you think. At least that's what happened in this situation. So with that, I offer you my reflection from Denver, Colorado. Thank you for listening as always. Okay, here you go. And today what we're going to talk about is when do things seem scarier than they are? So not that that happened to me, but it did. You know, I think there was something about the last straw where you just feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this. And it really wasn't that big of a deal. And I think I just needed to take a breath and remember and ground. And so I thought I would just bring this forth because I think sometimes our fear can be bigger than it needs to be. And especially if we're in unfamiliar territory. So for me, what happened was I'm driving across the United States and I guess there's something about traveling alone which I'm quite comfortable with because I've done that before. Although I am someone who would rather do most things with other people. There are times when a lonesome venture is just the right thing. And this is one of those times for me. But when you travel alone, you have to really be thoughtful about things. I I just wanted to make sure that I know where I'm going and that my car is in good shape and that I'm being safe. And, you know, I have a lot of advice it's really cute. I have a lot of advice from some older relatives in my life who are still looking out for me, which is amazing. And also the wisdom from friends and people who have traveled roads like this before me. And so that's been really helpful. But I have to say that I have been uh, a little bit on high alert, just trying to remember things and be cautious, while at the same time, just immersing myself in the beauty of the scenery and the freedom of making choices and oh, just experiencing new things. I'm quite delighted <laughs> to just reflect on the things that I have seen and experienced in just these short amount of days. And right now I'm in Denver, Colorado. And let me tell you, the scenes driving through Utah and Colorado are beyond breathtaking. Oh my gosh, the colors and the mountains, and the winding river, and colored sections, whether it's because of tree, or rock, or flower, or shadow, it is stunning. And there was this one area, it was near a place called Fruta, Colorado. I thought it was Fruita. I think I wanted to pronounce it like you would in Japanese. Uh, Not that I speak Japanese either. And the lady was like, it's Fruta. And I was like, oh, well, I guess that makes sense. It's F-R-U-I-T-A. Anyways, this scene right when I was about to arrive where I was staying in Fruta, Colorado, there was the river, the Colorado River, and it was winding near the road I was on. And the color of the water was, it was like this color I'd never seen before. It was sky blue mixed with deep gray. So it was almost imaginative or idyllic with a slight tinge of darkness, but the darkness felt really beautiful because it was coloring that really light, bright sky blue. It was just winding with this greenery around it. And then right in the backdrop were these land carvings, you know, those kinds of cliffs where you see the different layers of sediment and color and texture. And oh my gosh, it was so gorgeous. So I got a little sidetracked from my moment of fear. But I wanted to say that amidst our travels, we can still be feeling this low grade or high grade even anxiety as we're making sure that we're surviving. I think there have been 
so many things that I tried to prepare for. I went to all my doctors and my dentists and everything because I knew that my insurance was only based in California and I needed to wait to get to the East Coast before I could switch over. And so in Colorado, I decide to chip my tooth. (laughs) I have no idea how it happened, but it's this one tooth that got injured very badly when I was a young child. And so it's one of those teeth that I really have to watch out for. And I decide to chip it right there in the middle of my trip. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't know why, but fear took over. I was like, how am I going to fix this? I don't know anyone here. How do I get a dentist appointment? What is a dentist? Like I started losing my sense of orientation. It didn't help that the hotel that I was at last night, their Wi-Fi went totally down and I had trouble taking this meeting that I needed to take last night. And then I had a lot of work that I have lined up. And so I had to switch hotels late last night. And so it's a little bit discombobulated, but I think I was just pushed a little bit, maybe tiredness too. And I all of a sudden felt a lot of fear over chipping my tooth. And I, I just couldn't think straight. And I, I just, okay, I was like, I just need to take a breath. And remember, there are a lot of people here that go to the dentist and a lot of dentists know what to do. But I have to say that I went through a little bit of panic, like, am I going to be okay? And it, it sort of tapped into those primal fears where you just don't know if you're going to survive. And I want to be really gentle with that because it comes from, well, part of it is just because we're in unfamiliar territory and a lot of that is valid. And part of that is because I'm trying to stay on a schedule because I have different places booked out and some of them are non-refundable. But I think the most of it was just my nervous system fearing that unfamiliar territory that can present as bigger than it really is. And so I just thought I'd bring that today to our circle. Thankfully, because of the internet, just searched, read reviews, found someone who was able to take me And I got it fixed very quickly, very easily, and met some really cool people. So I think really what I needed to do was just take a breath and remember that this isn't as hard as maybe my fear-mounting, my fear-mounting monster might try to tell me it is. So what is it for you? Is there anything for you right now that is on that feels bigger than it might be? And as you think about your resources, how might you move into that space with a little more ease and see if there's just somebody that can help you or some easeful solution as we just take that breath and separate it out from the other things that just seem, you know, those days when everything seems to be piling on. How gentle can you be with yourself during those times? Yeah, I just want to wish you well. And remind all of us that we have each other and even some of the hardest things, many times it's just a lot less than we think. And so I just wanted to bring some encouragement and also just normalize the fact that we do feel fear sometimes, no matter how well prepared we are, no matter how much we caretake others, sometimes our own fear can start to mount and that's okay. And so anyway, I just wanted to say hello and wish you well, and I hope you're having the best week. I'll see you next time.